Whew. It is blistering hot in the skybox in the corner of the level tonight. I'm Rez. Thanks for joining me. Uh, let's see. It's been a while. I've missed two of these in a row, and I would have missed this one, except I decided I would take just one hour of my evening this Wednesday um, to get back into the swing of things with this JavaScript project. Quick reminder, this stream is currently all about implementing this kind of pixel-driven circuitry simulation and making it run across all browsers as quickly as possible, which is what clicking this turbo button exemplifies. During the stream, the speed, which is down in the bottom right corner of the screen, uh, will be throttled just because the system resources on my machine are divided between the code I'm running and the recording and streaming of the entire screen and audio. We got this to be pretty fast recently. Uh, you know, 3,700 or 3,800 uh, steps. That's a single step. Step, step, step. Uh, 3,800 steps per second is pretty fast for a JavaScript simulation of something like this. Um, especially when we're talking about an image that's kind of like 800 by 600 uh, cells. So, happy with that. Now, one feature of the old Wireworld player that I implemented back in the day in Adobe Flash um, that I would like to bring back here is I could like go up here into the URL box and say index.html question mark brain equals slow or like brain equals GPU and that's not a super great user experience I could probably after this uh, episode I could probably implement a select box a combo box in the UI that would expose this stuff instead but essentially that string would resolve into loading a different uh, a different brain essentially, which nowadays are called engines in this project. Oops, that's a yes, three, here we go. So remember, all the code that runs super fast right now is in engine.js, and wireworld.js loads, there it is, loads a worker from engine.js at runtime, which means we could instead keep a map of these strings and name them so that engine old or engine slow or engine strategy one um, would resolve to these different JavaScript files. And well, what difference would there be? Well, first to make sure that everything is working, we would actually move the color scheme that is used um, let's see, paper.js. I'm rusty. These colors that are currently in paper.js, we could actually provide them to the paper from the engine as the default color scheme for that engine. And um, by having different JavaScript files, you know, different engines, um, they could have different colors, which is a, a pointless waste of this functionality, but at the very least it would allow us to very quickly visually distinguish between the different engines, right? So we wouldn't have trouble telling them apart. And once we get that in, something that I'm keen to try is to go back into the history of this project to strategy one, strategy two, strategy three, strategy four, uh, the naive stuff that came before strategy one, and basically copy paste them into a copy of engine.js so that 
we could directly compare the performance of these different implementations. And all of them would inherit from the uh, bug fixes and insights that we gained along the way implementing the latest version of Engine.js. For example, all of them could use Turbo implemented in this exact same way. So they wouldn't differ in Turbo, but, sorry, um, start Turbo. So, you know, they wouldn't be at all different with Turbo and other things, uh, but they would be different in their models and they would be different in their update function. So this would be different, for instance. So in the hour that I have availed myself this evening, I would like to get started on that. Um, first things first. Oh, before I do, um, you folks might not know, but there's a new Matrix movie coming out, and the uh, promotional website uh, is now online, and you can see different versions of the trailer that comes out tomorrow at 6 a.m. Pacific uh, by clicking the red pill or the blue pill um, and trying it again at different times of day. So they've pre-rendered um, apparently six different variations on the trailer. Um, a total of 1,440 movies, each corresponding with one minute out of the day. So, you know, if I click one of these, we'll see a teaser that talks about it being uh, 6.37 p.m. local time, uh, which is an interesting trick. It definitely gets people uh, hitting this website over and over again. I'm looking forward to when this website hopefully evolves a little bit more into the multimedia experience that what is the Matrix had been in 1999 to promote the original film. Um, we won't be able to see much of it in this Internet Archive Wayback Machine because it expects that... Well, here we go. Yeah. Let's try a slightly later version. Maybe later than that. What we're looking at is the HTML page. There we go. The HTML page that loaded back in the day. Um, that would have, you can look down here for the different links. So this was the comics, the photos, um, the screensaver. I'm going to click that one real quick. Uh, various games you could play. Um, all promoting the franchise back in 2000. And these leaned heavily on Flash. So we're actually looking at the fallback page that visitors would see if they didn't have Flash installed, because I don't have Flash installed anymore. Um, the screensaver came in Mac and PC flavors, and it led to an explosion of people uh, attempting to make their own uh, replica of the raining green text effect. Um, and I'm going to show off mine, because captive audience of zero people. Not bad, right? Um, there's some interesting uh, features that mine has. Uh, this one's new. Pretty excited how that turned out, the 3D effect. Um, let's see, uh, version equals operator. This one looks a little bit more like it does in the original movie. Um, and then I took some creative license to make some others that um, are allusions to uh, previous versions of the simulation that are um, referenced by characters in the original trilogy. Point is, um, quite a lot of people were inspired by the imagery of the original film, and it led them to create uh, expressions, creative expressions with code. And I think that's fantastic. 
and they've kept at it. If you Google, uh, not Google, excuse me, if you search GitHub for Matrix, I mean, obviously you're not going to just find things that have to do with the movie. Um, in fact, most of these involve either matrices, the data type, or um, sites that leverage the library called Matrix, the framework called Matrix. I'm not entirely sure what it is. <laughs> it's an SDK, as you can see. Um, but you know, eventually, just looking around, terminal-based matrix-like implementation. Is there a screenshot? There is. And look at that. That's fantastic. It's charming, to be honest. Um, can I star this? I'm not signed in. Um, I will star it after the stream. Four years ago, merged a pull request. I wonder what the latest, nine days ago was the latest one, merge pull request. And curses, yeah. Anyway, so you know, there's, there's, if you look for them, <laughs> which is becoming harder and harder as the word matrix is used to actually describe uh, practical things rather than reference the movie uh, more and more these days uh, in, you know, open source, public repos. Um, you can see people kind of trying their hand at the effect that um, was so cool looking 22 years ago. Anyway, let's do something with this. Let's make, first of all, I'm going to cut a branch and I'm going to call it um, choose, uh, let's see, engine selection. Our goal up here is to put previous implementations in other engines. So we're going to start actually by making a folder in JS. Um, bu -bu -bu -bu. Here we go. JS engines. So we're making a new folder called engines and engine goes in there and wireworld.js uh, engines. We're going to change this URL and make sure that everything still works. It does. Because this engine.js file is self-contained. It might not be self-contained for long, only because there's a lot of code in engine.js that could be shared between implementations. We'll just have to wait and see. So, we've got that. Great. Um, that's one of the advantages of workers, uh, web workers, actually. You kind of know that whatever you shove in here um, is self-contained. It has no dependencies on the stuff outside. Now, granted, stuff like this where we are taking a message from a web worker and determining what it means. This stuff obviously depends on the implementation of the engine. But aside from this API, um, we know that Engine.js does its own thing. Okay, so. To demonstrate, okay, so dead color. We're going to change this to const default theme equals make theme. I'm going to copy these first. Make theme doesn't exist yet. Um, actually, Let's see. Might as well give us a name. Circuit theme. 
um, classic theme is going to be these colors. So quick reminder, these colors are the color of dead wire tail and head cells in the simulation. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just shoving them into an object where the values are formatted for endianness and stuff like that. Um, just making it a little bit easier to reference them instead of being um, cons like this. Basically, these consts are going to go into the initial... Uh, no sense in doing an initialize. They'll be in the update function. Um, just tail and head, really. Anyway, so... There we go. Alright. Now make theme is a function that does not currently exist. Um, so const make theme equals um, what order are these? Dead wire tail head. Dead color I just forgot. Wire color tail color head color. And it's going to create um, a bunch of these. So actually I can just modify this. Um, here, I'll do that, and then, oops, color, cool, there we go, and then, const default uh, let theme equal classic theme. Nice. And then, in initialize, fill theme dot, um, dead, uh, theme dot dead, theme dot wire, And then down here, const tail color equals theme dot tail, head color equals theme dot head. Let's try that. Still works, still fast. Okay, cool. So the next question is how do we populate the theme from the data? We can do this. Um, engine theme, no. Here, I'll do this. Const, no, theme equals data.theme. If data.theme isn't null, theme is data.theme. Cool. Okay. At some point, switching themes will not depend on the engine, but this is a good place to start. So now... Oh, whoops. Theme equals make theme data.theme. There we go. So now, all that we need to do to... allow engines to specify a color theme is this const theme equals dead oh hang on hmm
Let's try that. Okay, theme. So this is the circuit theme. Data.theme is an old, right, I didn't pass it in, of course. So initialize equals um, send, no, I'm beginning to forget. Post message, there we go. Grid indices, render, huh. I guess I can just put it in here. Interesting. Wire world render. Queued render. Paper update. Paper dot initialize I see okay so we need Oof. initialize has cell states does engine have cell states it doesn't and it shouldn't So the issue is this data that we hand the paper immediately gets turned into, oh, you know what? Here's something we could do. Cell states, okay. Um, let cell states, cool. Huh, width isn't stored either. Well, that's fine. Just a little odd. Theme, well, no. Um, cell states equals data dot cell states. So it stores it. Woof. That's not great, actually. Just thinking this through. Hmm. See, this cell states array is actually pretty big. Okay, here's something we can do. We can... Sorry, one second. So update gets the theme, which we don't want. Okay, here's what we do. Instead of initializing the paper with the data. Okay, I'm liking this. We no longer initialize the paper this way. We initialize the paper this way. Case, initialize, paper. Paper.initialize event.data.args zero break the data that the paper receives in initialize will contain the theme okay width height cell states the engine can handle this um do we want to call it initialize paper?
Let's call it setup. Okay. Okay. So now, we don't care on reset. Okay, so grid indices, one second. Set grid indices, I see. So grid indices is actually going to be merged in with this initialized call. So instead of set grid indices, okay, initialize, grid indices equals data dot grid indices, um, theme equals data. Oh, right. Yeah, this is fine. So grid indices is used there. Okay. So instead of that, it's going to be that. Okay. And then paper grid indices. Okay. Cell grid indices. Cool. Uh, and then in here, theme width. Width is in here, right? It is. Height. And okay, interesting. So we only need to tell. Basically, we need to share. Hang on, cell grid indices should be enough. Sorry, one moment. Data grid indices is basically a list. Okay. It's a list of every non dead, right? Cell grid indices is a list of every non-dead cell. Fantastic. So the paper already has the information that we uh, need to give it. So we're politely providing width and height. We're passing in cell grid indices, which is the mapping of cell indices. Like, it basically, something we did in the past was every pixel, every cell, now has its own unique identifier, which is different from its width and height. But because we're providing a list of every cell, the paper has enough information to update itself. Fantastic. Width, height, cell, and cell grid indices theme. Okay. Paper, width, height, grid indices, so then cell states is no longer awesome. Okay, so console.log grid indices. What's it complaining about? Set grid indices can't be found. Set grid indices. Paper, right. No need for it anymore. Uh, grid indices last head IDs. Did 
Did I misname it? Yes, I did. So I'm going to rename this Cell Grid Indices. Nice. Cool. Okay. So all we need to do is draw the wires. And the way we draw the wires. <laughs> This is so cheap and sleazy. Um, so, for let i equals zero, there it is. Len equals cell grid indices dot length. i is less than len, i plus plus. Active pixels. Nope, we don't want active pixels. We want base pixels. Base pixels. Hmm. Drawing space. Okay, base drawing pixels, base pixels dot fill, cool, and then base pixels cell grid indices i equals theme uh, wire color, and wire color head color going to be like this. Const wire color. There we go. Um, that's why. Close brace. Boom! The only bug is this. Cell cell grid indices starts with a 1. The first cell in cell grid indices is is not real. Um, is not a real cell, I guess. So we start at index one. Just get rid of this. Excellent. Cool. So this means that we also now have a way to draw the base that does not require the data that was passed in from the parser. So in here, so let's look at update. So update changes active pixels and then it does a put image data. So down here, base drawing, interesting, context. Okay, I'm gonna replace base drawing like that. And in here, I'm going to say draw base layer. const draw base layer equals so now it's freestanding and it's fine with that this will make it easier in the future to implement theme customization that has nothing to do with the engines anyway Great. So 
run prettier. Actually, stage the changes. Let's see what the changes are in prettier. Okay, I don't like that, so I'll go into paper. Change this around. No difference. That's better. What happened here? Um, yeah, this is fine. Cool. So, engines now occupy and now sit in their own folder. Um, what else? So, Wireworld... Search params. So we've already got params. Um, let engine, and we're going to say const engines by name equals default Yeah, I probably want this like this. Default. Um, and it's going to be this. Um, engine file name. Const engine file name equals engines by name, which will now be named engine file names by name. Yep. Um, engine name or engine file names by name default. Then up here, let engine name equal default. And then in here, um, yeah, that's fine. Dot JS. Great. Let's run this again. It found it. That's good. And if we rename this to engine two, it fails. Fantastic. And then we can say engine name equals params.get engine or default. And then if I do this engine equals uh, foobar. It won't find foobar, and so it'll load the default engine. Changes to wireworld.js. These are fine. And now, for the sake of testing, engine... I'm going to rename this engine2 and its theme is going to be um, here I should pick a theme from here from the old Wireworld project GUI nope display nope Wireworld views color palette Yes, here they are. Great. So these are the old color palettes. Uh, const, and we're going to lowercase these. Use our inside voices. Uppercase P and palette equals uh, palette. We're going to rename theme. And instead of new color theme, we're just going to do cr 
curly uh, square brackets like that. We're going to say, boom, engine 2 now has a bunch of these. Um, oh, okay, they all need FF at the end. FF, FF, um, lowercase these, there. So now, this theme should actually appear. There it is. So, const old themes equals, I'm just going to grab all these, put them in here. And again, because default is like a restricted word, let's try that. Uh, right, one second. So Wireworld, Engine 2, Engine 2, Engine 2. Um, engine equals Engine 2. And if we change the theme in engine 2 to old themes dot classic, boom, classic color. Let's change it again. Minty. There's Minty. Whew, it's been a while since I've laid my eyes on this toothpaste uh, volcano. Bubblegum. Oof. I might want to rethink some of these. Brass. Freon. Eh? Freon's not so bad. Looks kind of electrified. Um, GPU. Ugh. <laughs> so. <laughs> Obviously, the GPU color palette was never meant to be shown on screen. Um, it was probably used in the Flash project to give the GPU an image where the different cell states were separable into the different channels of the image. So we're just going to get rid of that because it looks gross. Current... I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm probably going to base some of these instead off of um, right. Okay, that's not so bad. Looks like a blueprint. I'll probably rename it blueprint, actually. Um, you know, let's leave it at this. Our world got changed again. Uh, yep, so engine 2 is going to be to do remove rename because obviously we're not going to call an engine engine 2. We're going to come up with useful names for all of these things. And one more run through prettier. No change. So engines now sit in their own folder engines dictate the default color theme uh, paper why am I using semicolon when I've used period in the past paper initializes with data straight from the engine rather than from the parser um, paper here theme to the paper. Paper initializes with data straight from the engine rather than from the parser. Um, oh right, um, a the new engine URL parameter. I gotta update that in the to do. Um, Replace URL parameter 
well, we've got the URL parameter, but we also want there to be like a UI element that allows the player to specify what engine they want. Add UI for player to specify what engine they want. There we go. Um, and this is one reason why engine.js is pro um, let's see that works. Um, make new engines based on old strategies. Extract common code. Use import scripts to add it to all engines. Cool. Add UI for player to specify what engine they want. Yes. Cool. To do update. So again, engines now sit in their own folder. Engines dictate the default color theme to the paper. Paper initializes with data straight from the engine rather than from the parser. The new engine URL parameter allows the user to specify which engine to load as a worker. Nice. This is going to go on the repo. Do we have time? We've got 23 minutes for me to try and create an actual engine based on one of the historical implementations of the engine. Viewers, I don't know if I have the stamina tonight. At the very least, we can look them over. So let's look again at the strategy notes document. So naive approach makes a cell for every pixel in the data. Here. Um, engines to, why am I doing it here? Gonna get out of text edit, gonna put it in here. So, the naive approach is make a cell for every cell here model every cell in the sim including dead ones and then update with nested for loop render with every cell Y, X, well, update with nested for loop, switch, neighbor loop. That's what it was. Okay, so that's the, na the naive one. And then um, the next step up from that was to ignore dead cells. So, um, alive. These are working titles. So, only model the non-dead cells. Is it the same otherwise? Update with nested for loop switch neighbor loop. Yes. Yep. 
Yeah, we used to send all of the wire cells down. Or no, we didn't. Render with every head and tail. Okay. And then uh, advance, iterate over neighbors instead of adjacent cells. And then down here is new cell fields. Okay. So then here is, um, we should call this objects. Model cells as objects with fields. Woof. This will be the hardest one, even though it's the most recent previous version. That'll be the hardest one. <clears throat> Model cells as objects with fields, right? And then update. Sorry, one second. This is strategy two. Iterate over neighbors instead of adjacent cells. Ah, right. Um, this should be called neighbors. Neighbor array update with nested for loop. Here. With loop over all cells, and then down here with loop over non-dead cells update with loop over non-dead cells switch so this is neighbor loop is um nested adjacency loop and then this is the neighbor loop um Trying to organize my thoughts here. Render every cell. Alive, render every head and tail. Neighbors, render every head and tail. And then we did linked lists. model linked lists. This will be the hardest one. I think. I could be wrong. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how hard these get. Model cells as objects with fields, neighbor array, switch, neighbor loop. The easiest thing actually might be to take old versions of Engine.js and get rid of their non-model code. Anyway, with object fields, update, loop over, and this is where it gets loopy. Loop over neighbors of heads, loop over new heads, loop over tails. So that gets rid of the switch. Loop over heads, neighbor loop, and then down here, render every head and tail. And then the last one is flat. Model 
cells and linked lists as data in a buffer. This already exists. Right? Yep. Cool. There we go. That is what is in store for me next episode. Which I really hope is a week from now. Yeah. These past few weeks I've had very bad um, work-wife balance. My partner and I have done some interesting things out of town. Carefully, I might add, because a plague is still going on. Um, and also work has been hectic. So hopefully the stars align next week, because I really do want this to be a... I mean, considering all the episodes that I've already done on a weekly basis, I would like to be able to maintain that cadence. It's kind of an indicator that my Wednesday nights are still mine. This Wednesday night, though, it is my partner's birthday. So, um, we are time boxing this to an hour and wrapping things up in two and a half minutes. So this is what we have to look forward in the next stream. Basically, every one of the engines that we will be supporting will have their own color scheme, so we can be absolutely sure that they are um, initializing properly, I guess. So we can tell them apart at a glance. And we'll have the old code inside driving the update loop, but we'll still have the turbo implementation that we've got working and all of the web worker uh, message passing and so on and so forth. That about wraps it up. Um, I know this was a quick episode, but uh, them's the breaks. Let's see. So, um, add here. List all the engines to support. Oh, you know what? I should add some speculative new ones. So, new engines? Question mark. Um, maybe GPU. Maybe WebAssembly. GP will be tricky because that would require, I mean, to be honest, GPU is going to be in the main thread. Main thread. And then WebAssembly could be in a worker. Make sure cores isn't a problem. Okay. based on previous implementations. Okay, so... These don't go in a web worker. So basically, that would be like in engine file names by name, we would expand this to also specify whether they are, whether they go into a worker or not. Yeah, we will cross that bridge when we reach it. 
Okay. Um, I guess this is ep episode nine. So tag episode nine. Well, thanks again. I will do my best to get this back to a weekly cadence, and I'll see you next Wednesday. Fingers crossed.